All right, I think that everything is about ready. I think I've tweaked everything I can tweak and probably broken half of what I touched. But you know what? That's just what happens sometimes. So we're going to get into this whether I'm ready or not. I'm not asking whether you're ready or not, because, I mean, if you're here, then you are you already volunteered, so... Then again, I'm here, so I volunteered as well. Regardless, we're getting this started. So let's just make that go away. And there we go. Hello, Shadowcat back, and today I'm doing probably the hardest conversation I've ever had to do since I've been doing this. I've covered culture, I've covered politics, I've covered science, and this was the hardest thing I've, I've had to talk about yet. Not necessarily because, you know, dogs are hard to talk about, but because it's kind of an overly broad thing. And because it's so very subjective and kind of amphibious. Not that dogs are amphibians, no. Do dogs, dogs are not amphibians, they're mammals, but... The subject that I was asked to talk about was kind of... Yeah, I mean... So I asked people what they would like to hear about. And one of the requests that I got was dogs. Specifically, when it came down to things like... Um, when it came down to things like the banning of certain dog breeds. And so... I mean, I can talk about that because there is all kinds of information that I can pull up on dog attacks by breed and things like that. And I can even bring up a really, a really easy one right here. Let's go ahead and make this, this picture bigger. Can I make that bigger? I really can't make that bigger, can I? But you know what? It's good enough. However, before we get into the bad things, I, I have a different backdrop for today. Because normally I would just have, like, the, the curtain and the podium here. But we need, we need something nicer than this. So let's see if this is working. Well, it's kind of working. Why, why are you not going? Okay, there it's going. Is it going to stay going? I mean, I hope it stays going. Since we're talking about dogs, I figured we needed dogs. I don't know. We'll see how long that keeps going for. I don't know. So anyway, I was asked to talk about the banning of different dog breeds around the world. And my first thought was... What am I supposed to say about this? Because when you talk about the banning of dog breeds, it's subjective. Now, you have lots of people who would like to see every dog breed banned because they think that dogs in general are just bad. And then you have some people who say that no dog breeds should be banned. And I'll be honest with you, that's the camp that I'm in. And I even have somebody in the chat. Hello, Fubar. Hopefully my chat is not going to be foobar, or my, my presentation won't be foobar. Anyway, yeah, I fall into the category of no dog breeds should be banned. Because, why? I, I, I don't, I do not believe there is such a thing as a bad animal. And I, I think that, that applies to kind of all animals. Like, you shouldn't keep a lion as a pet, but if you're going to blame the lion for killing somebody, well... It's a lion. It kind of kills people. Now, I know that there are people who have good relationships with lions, and you can see them on YouTube, but even those people will admit that, you know, it's an animal. It can kill you. If you don't treat it right. And dogs are the same way. If you treat a dog poorly, or you train a dog to kill people, it will kill people. So, without further ado, why don't we take a look at that real quick. Let me pull this down. So here's the entire crux of the matter. Whenever you hear somebody talking about, you know, how we, or we need to 
ban dogs? Well, this is why. Now, I, I, let's see. This says up here, this is... I'm going to assume that it, since it says 2022, that this is 2022 statistics. These are all the, uh, well, not all, but the top... Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, top 11. Um, top 11 dog deaths, or at least deaths by dog. Obviously, pit bulls are right up there at the top of the list. Now, personally, I think pit bulls get a really bad rap because I love pit bulls. I call them the smiley dog. Have you ever seen a, the, the pit bull when its mouth is open? It looks like a great big smile. Pitbulls are great. Not to mention, I mean, they're just generally overall good dogs. They're not too energetic like what you would get with an Australian Shepherd. They don't have a ton of health problems like you see in things like pugs. I mean, granted, pugs I think should not exist, but either way. Okay, maybe a bad example. Uh, what's another dog that has a lot of health issues? Uh... I want to say Afghans. I think Afghans have a lot of health issues. Either way, pit bulls don't have a whole lot of health issues. They're low maintenance. I, they, don't, they don't have a whole lot of fur. They're just good general dogs. Now, why do people want them banned? Well, because they are good guard dogs. And they have been used as such for a long time. Because of that, they have been bred to be somewhat territorial, they have been bred to be domineering, and they've been bred to be defensive. But it's not like they're roaming the streets at night in gangs. Generally speaking, if you were attacked by a pit bull, there was a reason for it. Probably the reason for it was the owner. Because the owner got a pit bull wanting that kind of dog. And they got it. Next, you got the Rottweiler, and when you when you look at this, I mean, look at the look at that massive jump right there, two hundred and eighty four deaths down to forty five. Seems like people are getting a whole lot of pit bulls for a whole lot of bad reasons. Again, it's not the dog. Because I wonder how many dogs are out there, or how many pit bulls there are out there. Can I look that up real quick? Uh, let me get my phone. Let me get my phone. Um, I'm going to assume that this is going to be a U.S.-centric study. Let's see. Pit bulls in U.S. There are around 18 million. This is according to the um, World Animal Foundation. There are about 18 million. That's an 18 followed by six zeros. Pit bull type dogs and their mixes in the U.S. Despite the reputation, pit bull accounts for 6% of all the dogs in in the US. Now, 18 million. I'm gonna pull up my calculator real quick. And I'm gonna go, uh, let's see, what do we got here? 284 divided by 18 million. Do you wanna know what that number is as a percentage? That is 0 0.0001%. I mean, that number is just so vanishingly small. So it's not even a matter of, you came across a dog. Oh no, the dog happens to be a pit bull. Maybe I should be scared of it. It's like, <laughs> no. You came across a pit bull, and that number is so vanishingly small among all pit bulls. And if I was to look into Rottweilers, German Shepherds, things like that, that number would be even more vanishingly small. 
it's not about the breed. It's about the owners. So that's really all we, I need to talk about here, because I think that I've made my point already. It's been 10 minutes. I guess we can pack it in and go home now, right? No, obviously not. The reason I was asked to do this is because I, I was asked to talk about the banning of dog breeds. And honestly, when I was asked about that, my first thought was, what am I supposed to talk about? Number one, I don't believe it. Okay? I, I just, I don't buy it. I, I've never bought into the thing. And I'll tell you why. Number one, when you when you talk about how dangerous a dog is, I, I want to see a dog, like, actually attack somebody. Like, go for the throat. Go for the eyes. That's a dog attack. Anything less than that, anything less than a dog hamstringing you to bring you down to their level, I don't really consider an attack. Why? It's a dog. We have hands. Dogs don't have hands. And I know personally a lot of people who have claimed to have been bitten by dogs while they were playing with dogs. And it's like, well, hold on a second. You were playing with the dog. Maybe you were playing with a toy. Maybe you are playing with a rope or a ball or something. Or maybe you were just wrestling with the dog in general and then the dog bit you. Well, let me ask you this. What were you playing with? What, what were you using? I don't know. Uh, I had a toy. Okay. And what were you holding the toy with? My hand. Uh-huh. And what does the dog have to hold the toy with? Uh, its mouth? Yeah. Because dogs don't have hands. They have a mouth. Which means that if the dog was going to grab onto the toy, or, I don't know, grab onto you, what's it going to do with? Oh yeah, the thing filled with all the teeth. It's not biting, it's playing. Trust me, if a dog wanted you dead, you would be dead. Most people could not fight off a dog attack. Not very well, anyway. And you're not getting away unscathed. I don't care how good you think you are. Dog attacks are nasty. Which is why I think that a lot of this is very interesting, because... While I was trying to think of, what, what am I supposed to talk about with this? Some news came out. Now, I thought this was very interesting news that I wanted to share with you when I did this. Now, this is news coming out of Egypt. And if you're big into dogs, maybe you heard about this already, but even if you're not... This is the news out of Egypt. Egypt has gone ahead and banned dogs. But they didn't ban one dog. They didn't ban a breed of dogs. They banned all dogs. All of them. Save ten. Now, technically speaking, you can still have the others, but they require a safety inspection. But Who's going to be doing the safety inspection? What's their their bias going to be? And what are they going to permit or not? Yeah, a lot of people don't really tr uh, trust this, like in the slightest. Especially given how once you get into the Middle East, once you get into Africa, once you get into, you know, Asia, the governments tend to become more and more corrupt, more and more biased, and... The people who decided to put this into effect, yeah, they're not actually going to permit anything. It'll be a matter of money. If you can pay them enough money to look the other way, they'll allow you to keep your Rottweiler. Anybody else with one is not going to have one. So what are they still allow allowing? Because this is actually very interesting. Obviously, they're banning everything. All of the animals that were on this list... Pitbulls, Rottweilers, German Shepherds, American Bulldog, Siberian Husky, Labrador Retriever. Nine deaths from labs. You know, everybody's friend. Boxers, Doberman Pinchers, all of these dogs in, in Egypt are gone. 
But you want to know what's not gone? Okay. Where's the list? Uh, that's the list in Arabic. There is a list in here, wasn't it? Uh, let's see. In Cairo, Egyptian authorities have recently enacted a new law. Yes. Uh, let's see. The law provided a list of dog breeds deemed dangerous and unsuitable for ownership without thorough safety inspection, including the Husky, German Shepherd, and Great Dane. Uh, let's see. These uh, dog breeds must surrender their, or owners must surrender their pets within a month or prepare for confiscatory raids. So in other words, they will be going door to door. And if you don't open your door, then they will simply knock your door down to see if you have any dogs. They will be going through and searching every home. Because that's what they're going to do. However, there are still 10 breeds left that you can get. The law will allow the ownership of only 10 breeds without inspection, that being the Cocker Spaniel, the Labrador. Oh, okay, so I got that wrong, because the Labrador is actually on the list of the most fatalities by breed. The Poodle, which is, in my experience, it is generally mean dogs, but whatever. The Malinois, which if you're not familiar, that's a very interesting dog, and we're going to come back to that. The Pomeranian, the Jack Russell, and the White Shepherd, the Maltese dog, and the Samoyed. Now, number one, I don't know why you'd have a Samoyed in Egypt to begin with, but sure. Interestingly enough, Samoyeds are Arctic dogs. They are in roughly the same vein as the Husky and, um, well, both kinds of Huskies. The regular Husky and the, the uh, Siberian Husky. The, um, ah, uh, what's it called? It starts with an M. Can't remember it now. But both kinds of Huskies. Samoyeds, right up there with them. But those are fine. However, what I found really interesting when I read this is that... They're allowing the Malinois. Now, if you don't know what a Malinois is, I'm going to show you. So, Ahmed, the owner of three dogs, two of which are banned under the new law, a Bull Terrier and a German Shepherd, said he's worried about their safety. He's called vets and police officers for reassurance, but they told him... Ah, Bliss is in the chat. Malamute, that was the word I was looking for. Yes, the Malamute and Siberian Husky. Those, those are banned, but, but the Samoyed is not. They're so close together. Anyway, he's got two dogs, and he's worried that they're going to be destroyed, since they are dangerous breeds. Here's where I want to go back to that, Mel, that Malinois. Specifically, it is the Belgian Malinois. And you may have seen one of them before. Because they're actually pretty common. You probably just didn't realize it. Because you might have simply assumed it was a German Shepherd. Now, coat patterns and coloring can change. So you can actually get a German Shepherd and a Malinois that can look pretty close together. Usually they're more distinctive. But I'm just going to show you one. This is a Belgian Malinois. A Belgian Malinois is a working class breed. Why? Because they tend to be used as security dogs. They have a sniffer that is just as good as a German Shepherd. They have a bite force comparable with a German Shepherd. They have speed and strength comparable with a German Shepherd. They're a little bit smaller, so they're on the lower end of the German Shepherd, but they fulfill all the same tasks. You know, like guard dog service. They're even used by the military. They're used by the police. Hence that good boy's collar. The Belgian Malinois 
is a working security dog. They're used as canine units, they're used as drug dogs, they're used as bomb dogs. They fulfill all the same categories. But this dog is allowed. But the German Shepherd is not. The Samoyed is allowed. But the Husky is not. And this is kind of why I really, really struggled with this whole discussion on dogs, because what, what exactly would you like me to say about this? The fact is that almost nobody who has demanded a dog be banned for some reason has done so with any kind of good faith argument or evidence. Again, we can come back to the dog bite statistics and say that pit bulls are responsible for 284 deaths. And if we come back here, we can look at dog attacks. Um, breed risk factor? Now here, this is a real problem, okay? This is a real problem with even having this discussion. As I already stated, the people who want to ban dogs want them banned for basically no reason. They can't provide the evidence. At the same time, though, if you try to argue in favor of the dogs, well, I'm sitting here on pitbullinfo.org. Do you really think that pitbullinfo.org is going to tell you a single bad thing about pitbulls? This is why bias in research is very important and very, very difficult to get around. Because everybody is going to have biases. Nowadays, more than ever, I've had this discussion in, in previous culturally based videos, where I have stated that argument is basically dead. The reason being, and I will, I will blame Al Gore for this one, okay? Because I'm sure that everybody who is at least over the age of 25, maybe 30, will be old enough to remember when the movie, um, uh, what was it called, what was it called, what was it called? Um, how am I forgetting this movie? I'm going to remember it before I actually search it, won't I? Uh, no, I didn't. The Inconvenient Truth. Right. Anybody who's like 25 years old-ish should remember... Well, maybe not 25, maybe closer to 30. Should remember the movie An Inconvenient Truth, even if you didn't see it. Which, I mean, I didn't see it. But you couldn't get away from it. Because... When Al Gore came out and made that movie, he basically said that the world is going to end. Because of what we have done to the climate, because of pollution, because of overpopulation, because of overfishing, because of, you know, the, the rape of the land and, and expansive commercial farming and everything else, because of everything we're doing to the world, the world was going to end. And he even went through so far as to get statistics from various government agencies to back up his claims. He went and had filmmakers go to like the Arctic where they showed polar bears that were standing on little chunks of ice because the ice caps are just gone. And as it turns out, almost every single claim that he made in his movie, The Inconvenient Truth, was bullshit. And it was intentionally cherry-picked to make the situation look like it was not just, you know, dangerous, but at this point, unavoidable. As in, the world is going to end, and there's probably nothing that humans can do to handle it. We're gonna go extinct, Every animal on the planet is going to go extinct. 
the world is going to turn into a flaming cinder. And it's all our fault. And I really think that that was the beginning of the death of debate and just general argumentation. Because he went through and he took official sources. He took government surveys. He took university studies. All of it. And Cherry picked the hell out of them to make his movie. And people believed it because all the sources were good. He would put up a survey and say this came from Cambridge University. Which it's true. It did come from Cambridge University. But what he didn't show is that he left off half of the chart. He would go to a, a U.S. service like the EPA and get their numbers on something. But he would leave out half the data and he would use the half of the data that supported his claim. This is intentionally lying. It's arguing in bad faith. But because all of the institutions he used were in good faith, and because he himself was regarded as, an, as a person in good faith. After all, it was Al Gore. He was a presidential candidate. I mean, he, he had been vice president. All of that good, that, that, um, the, the good faith that he had accumulated over time, he leveraged it, and it worked. And so now, whenever you go anywhere, anywhere on the internet nowadays, you cannot get a good faith argument because people know that it works. And I run into a similar problem whenever I have to do research for one of these. Again, I go back to where we are now, pitbullinfo.org. This is obviously blatant. Like I can go, I can look at this and say, this is an obviously biased source. They're, they're not going to tell me anything bad about dogs in general. But it's a source that I can use because at least when I look at things like this chart, this, this breed risk rate, I'm going to assume that the numbers are going to be somewhat accurate. We just have to take them with perhaps half a salt shaker. Now, um, dog right fatalities per 100,000 dogs. So, this is really small. Can I make it bigger? Okay, that's better. Now, this actually looks different because now when we're looking at the Malamute, dog bite related fatalities per 100,000 dogs. Um, 6.79. So per 100,000 dogs, there were 6.79 of them. That is, if I add three zeros, because I got to take three zeros off the 100,000, we move the decimal plate over three zeros, that is 0 0.006 percent which is actually higher than the pit bull because we look down here the pit bull type again we have to move the decimal place three points to the left for a percentage so we go one two three that's zero point zero 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 nine so if we take these numbers as being somewhat reliable the pit bull type which is the pit bull and all um all different mixes of them yeah not even particularly dangerous neither is the german shepherd the saint bernard ranks higher than the pit bull And so, of course, they're not going to give us any anything that's going to hurt them too much. But we, if we assume that this is true, again, we go back to the idea that there's no real danger from dogs unless they're trained to be dangerous. You need to go back down in size. Okay. 
However, as I pointed out with the Egypt article, it doesn't actually matter what the data is because people are just not going to... They're, they're, they don't really care. They think the dog is dangerous, so... The dog has to go. And, you know, that's not even really unique, because we do see this in other places. Look at racism around the world. This is actually a really interesting thing. I want to talk about racism for a minute, because... When you go to places like China, which is an extremely racist country, China hates, and I mean hates with an unadulterated passion. They hate with unmitigated zeal, black people. And I have to specify black people because I can't just say African. They do hate African people. But as far as they're concerned, all black people are African. This idea that, you know, you could have a black person who is not African, well, number one, they don't see how it's relevant. As far as they're concerned, a black person from England is no different than a black person from Kenya. And they hate all black people. They don't talk about it because it would make them look bad on the world stage where most of the rest of the world is like, skin color doesn't make you a bad person. In China, however, they don't care about that. I look at this as the same way. What Egypt is doing to dogs is basically the same thing that China is doing with blacks. See, China would love to go through and get rid of all the black people if they could. And um, they might actually be doing that in various different ways. Not to mention what they're doing in Africa right now, where they're actually going into different African countries and trying to take them over and then subjugate the population. They're not having a lot of luck there, but they're still trying. I look at this and I see the same thing. Because places like Egypt don't really care about the dogs. They, they don't care about individual dogs. They don't even care about statistics. They just want them gone. And this does give them another vector with which to go after people. So is it about dogs? Is it another just authoritarian push for power? I don't know. I can't say. All I know is what they're doing and what the results are going to be. The results are going to be, yeah, they're going to get rid of a whole bunch of dogs. They're going to be exterminating dogs by the thousands, perhaps even by the millions. Egypt is not a small country. And it's all because of why? It says this was prompted by a high-profile case earlier in the year, and I wonder if I can find that case. Uh, let's see, in case... No, it actually doesn't uh, show. Uh, let's see, attack... They don't, even, they don't even list it, as far as I can tell. Uh, let's see, these two moved their German Shepherds and family farm in Giza. Uh, let's see, while the rationale for selecting specific breeds was never explained, the dogs will be subjected to government safety licensing process. While the law suggests the government will take care of the confiscated dogs, there is no solid commitment to keep them alive. Yeah. Oh, wait, here we go. The bill stems from a tragic incident in February when Mohammed Maheb Al-Mawi, a banker in the Greater Cairo area, died during a medical procedure three days after a pit bull belonging to his celebrity neighbor bit his arm. Investigations suggest the cause of Mawi's death was due to medical malpractice in the operating room. However, the media coverage of the incident blamed the dog for his death, fueling a heated debate over public safety, prompting authorities to take action. And there you go. That's really everything you need to know about it. So the dog didn't even kill him. It may not have even been the injuries from the dog that killed him. And we don't know the circumstances under which the dog attacked. But it doesn't matter. 
because the people who already were biased against it went in and said, nope, it's the dog's fault. Ban the dogs. And they had enough influence to make it happen. And again, that's that's why I struggle with this, because what, what else am I supposed to say? There is nothing, there is not a damn thing that you could show the media over there, that you could show the politicians who were, who were making this decision. There's no evidence, there is no argument that you could make that would have stopped them from doing it. And this is why, you know, as much as I, I love dogs, and I do love dogs, and I love this discussion, and I would have this discussion every day, I really would. If somebody came to me and said they wanted to ban dogs, I would have this discussion with them. I will acknowledge what's the point. Because there's nothing that I'm going to say. This is one of the reasons why I have stated that among all the various conflicts that we have going on in the world right now, whether it's things like the, the pride movement in the U.S., or it's migration issues over in the UK. Whatever this is, I have stated before, a lot of people keep saying that we are on the cusp of civil war in various places. And I've said, no, that, that's wrong. It might look like one on the surface, but never mistake what you see for what is true. I've pointed out in other streams that what we stand upon is a religious war across the world. And that's because religion does not brook argument. You can have, you know, religious discussions if you want. Uh, you can even have debates and you could discuss interpretations of scripture and things. But at the end of the day, whether it's a Christian or a Muslim or a Jew or a Hindu or or anyone else, anyone else like that, you cannot argue faith because it's faith. Faith, by definition, does not, it doesn't argue. It doesn't need to. Faith does not need evidence. Faith does not need proof. Faith simply knows that it is right because it is right. After all, if it wasn't right, then it would be wrong. Therefore, it must be right. And I see the same argument that crops up when it comes to dogs. One of these people say that we need to ban pit bulls. They say, well, we have to ban pit bulls because they're dangerous. And when you ask them why, they simply say, because they're dangerous. So then you can provide them with a chart like I just did on dog attacks and fatalities and say, look, maybe these dogs are responsible for some deaths. But, you know, many dogs are responsible for deaths. But... It's such a, a vanishingly small number of them. How can you call the breed dangerous? It's like, yeah, but they did it. Therefore, they're dangerous. And you can argue with them. You can give them examples. You can even bring a pit bull in to see them and say, look, it's my friend's dog. Do you know what he does for 16 hours a day? He sleeps. And for the other eight hours, he eats. I know people more dangerous than the dog, but does it matter to them? Because they're going to say, it doesn't matter. The breed is dangerous. And just because, just because it hasn't attacked anyone yet, doesn't mean that it won't. Which, by the way, is the same argument that we make for things like original sin, that we make for pre-crime or anything like that. Just because you haven't done it yet doesn't mean that it won't happen in the future. The interesting thing about that is, I mean, I saw the movie Minority Report recently. 
which is actually a lot newer than I thought it was. I thought Minority Report was a much older movie. But if you haven't seen it... Let me see what I can pull up here. Uh, let's see. Images. Can I get, like, a trailer? Well, not necessarily a trailer, but... <clears throat> let's see. How about a poster? Poster is good, right? Everyone likes. Everybody likes posters. Get that out of there. There we go. So if you didn't remember it, maybe you do now. Maybe it was just a refresher. But here you go. Minority Report. It's actually a really bad picture. I didn't tell you anything about the movie. That just shows you Tom Cruise. Whatever. The entire concept of the Minority Report is basically they have a system. And the system allows you to peer into the future. Not too far into the future, but far enough that you can see a crime about to happen. And when they realize that a crime is about to happen, they go through and arrest the person before they can commit the crime. After all. If you have a person who is going to commit murder and somebody is going to die, if you can arrest them before they commit the murder, then there you go. Now, the movie goes kind of off the rails there and it says, well, these things happen and suddenly Tom Cruise's character, because I don't remember what his name is, uh, he gets accused of a crime and there's big chase and fighting and everything else. But... The real question about the movie that you were supposed to think about was this. Is it right to arrest somebody for a crime they haven't committed, even if you knew they were going to commit it? Now, we do have that to a certain extent now. Conspiracy is a crime in nearly every country around the world, to some degree or another. In many countries, I think most countries, conspiracy to commit the crime is as punishable as committing the crime itself. So if you were caught planning to assassinate somebody, the crime for conspiracy to assassinate would be the same as the assassination itself. In the U.S., it actually carries a slightly lesser penalty just because you didn't actually do anything. But what if you could apply that to all laws? I mean, we talk about saving somebody from, say, murder. Well, you just saved a life then, didn't you? And so that, that sounds really good. But what if you could use the same thing to prevent somebody from stealing? You could say, hmm. All the factors that have lined up in this certain way suggest that this person is going to rob this uh, this grocery store. We don't know how much they're going to get away with, but we do know that they're going to rob the store. We should go and arrest them now before they can do it. Okay. Number one, you didn't have any proof that they were going to do it, just your calculations. And they actually haven't done it. Nobody's been harmed, but you're going to arrest and punish them anyway. When we look at the movie Minority Report, we all agree that this is actually a bad thing. We, we shouldn't do this. But weirdly enough, when we apply it to someone else, it suddenly becomes okay. To go back to my examples that I was using earlier. Aw, oh, look at the fluffy boy. That was a husky. To go back to the examples that I was using earlier, when I talked about China and China's racism, particularly against black people. The reason why they are so racist against black people is because as far as they're concerned, black people are dangerous. They rob, they steal, they murder, they do all of these things. They don't think that black people are even capable of being decent people because on top of the fact that they're racist, they're also racial supremacists. Not all Chinese people, obviously, and 
There are a lot of Chinese people who, number one, don't even know what's going on because once you leave the cities, they're basically an agrarian culture. And even inside, you know, most of your major population centers, you're going to find decent people who either don't care or they do have some kind of moral structure where they can see through this stuff. But the party line is that black people are dangerous and worthless and lazy and should not exist. Again, we look at China and we say, well, now you're judging a whole group of people, the individuals of whom never did anything, they're not guilty of anything. The only thing they're guilty of is being born a way you didn't like. We say that's bad. It is bad. And then we look at dogs and want to do the same thing. It's the same as you had pre-crime in Minority Report and you have pre-judgment in a place like China. We prejudge dogs in the same way. We say, well, because it's a dog, it's got to be dangerous, right? Yeah, because a Pomeranian is not da or is absolutely not dangerous. I'm sure most people who interact with dogs know exactly what small dog syndrome is. Where you find that most of your vicious dogs tend to be the dogs that are small. Because they have to work extra hard to make themselves, you know, more dominant, more assertive, more alpha. And so... While dog fatalities may exist in, like, pit bulls and malamutes and, for some reason, even the St. Bernard. Yeah, most people that get bit by a, a chihuahua don't die. The end result, however, is that more people get bit by chihuahuas than probably any dog in the world. They just don't... They don't do anything about it because you got bit by a chihuahua. It probably didn't do any lasting damage. It's a bias in how we approach dogs in general. And it's wrong, of course. I, I don't think I really need to get that much into it. Ah, so what do I want to take this from here? Um, I don't know. Like I said, it's a really hard topic to talk about. I can go and I can pull up statistics... But we don't really need to see the th these statistics because we already know what they're going to say. If it's an anti-dog statistic, it's going to say that dogs are dangerous. If it's a pro-dog statistic, it's going to say they're not. And Tux is in the chat. This is his request. So I, I, I kind of hope that I'm doing, I'm doing right by Tux here. I'm probably not, but this, this one is for you. So yeah, we can go through um, statistics all day long. I don't think it really ma it makes a difference. We can go through different dog breeds. I don't think it makes a difference. Because I already established that, you know, how dangerous it is and how aggressive it is are pretty much inversely proportionate. Like, the more dangerous the dog gets, the less likely it is to be vicious. The less dangerous the dog is, the more likely it is to be. It's kind of like, you, you see that in other animals too. The smaller the animal gets, usually the more assertive it has to be in general. Uh, I just heard or learned about an animal the other day. What was it? It was... I was some kind of rodent. I don't remember what it was. Maybe it was like a gopher or something. I'm not sure. But the entire thing that kind of made it unique and stood out in my mind was the fact that... um. It's, it's like a, a little rodent, but it attacks. So, whereas most rodents would be akin to run, or even small mammals like rabbits and squirrels and things would run. Actually, is it a squirrel a mammal or is it a rodent? Well, rodents are mammals. I think squirrels qualify as rodents. But they would be more akin to run. You had this little, this little rodent that would actually attack and it would chase you and follow you because... Yeah. And Tuck says, ferrets? No, ferrets are not rodents. Ferrets are mustelids. And they're adorable, and they're good boys, too. There's nothing bad that a ferret ever did. 
unless it was to your uh, your house, in which case then they did all the bad things because they're incredibly destructive. However, they're so cute they can get away with it. But anyway, back on the subject of the rodents. Yeah, a rodent that would actually chase you and attack you because, well, what else is it going to do? It knows it doesn't really have a whole lot of other options. The same thing is true with small dogs. Don't have this problem with cats, though. And that's what makes cats better than dogs. So, I mean, we, we got to keep that caveat in place. Even though this whole conversation is about dogs, cats are still better. And I will fight anybody who disagrees. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of... I don't know what I'll say about dogs. I really don't. I mean, dogs are great. And the people who don't like dogs really just don't like dogs. It's not a matter of policy. It's not a matter of law. It's not even a matter of, like, social protection, social health, or anything like that. People that want to ban dogs just don't like dogs. And they have now gotten into a position of power where they can exercise the fact that they don't like dogs. This is no different than we see in other people who actively look for positions of power to then abuse. And we see it all the time. You can see a person who will have a certain chip on their shoulder and they will go into politics just so that they can enforce that chip on their shoulder. Whatever it may happen to be. And I think this is exactly what happened in Egypt. Again, yes, there was a, um, a, a dog attack. That did happen. However, what, what, what are we supposed to say about this? What was it? Why did the media have to come out and say that, number one, it was a dog attack when the person died in surgery? Presumably, they even they admitted, presumably, from malpractice. I mean, that, that is what it said. Yes, let's see. Stems from this, uh, who died during a medical procedure three days after Pitbull. Doo -doo. Investigation suggests the cause of the death was due to medical malpractice in the operating room. That's the investigation they're talking about. Which, by the way, is being done presumably by either the government or a government-adjacent agency. Which means that they should be even more favorable to blame it on the dog. And even they said that it was more likely medical malpractice. Even they can't spin it to say, nope, it's just that all dogs are dangerous. No, this entirely came down to people who had biases, who had a chip on their shoulder, and wanted dogs gone. Now, Egypt can get away with that. Because it's Egypt, and basically the people over there don't have rights. Like, at all. They technically will have rights on paper, but whether or not those rights will be enforced... Probably not. But we do see that over here. There are many places in the US, in Canada, in the UK, in Europe, where dogs like pit bulls have been banned. I wonder if I can pull that up. Let's see, what can I get here? What can we do? What can we do? I looked for a pit bull ban map. Uh, let's see, legal status of pit bulls. This is on Reddit. As a general rule, don't trust anything you see on Reddit. However, <clears throat> anywhere in green, pit bulls are absolutely banned. So those would be the provinces of Ontario and Manitoba, I do believe that is. Uh, let's see, Brazil, they are banned. Ooh, I can make it bigger. Yay! Let's see, I want to say this is... 
Colombia? No. Maybe? I don't remember my South American geography. I want to say that's Colombia. But that looks banned. I have no idea what that country is, but they're banned there too. Uh, we look over in Africa, nothing banned there. But that's because Africa doesn't have laws. They are completely banned in the UK. I do believe this is... Scotland? I think that's Scotland. Could be wrong. But banned there. I think this is... Sweden? Maybe. I'm not sure. Wow, I'm actually really feeling bad about this now. I, sh I should know my geography better. But banned there. Banned in Russia. Uh, this is... Turkey? I think it's Turkey. So banned in Turkey. I'm not even going to get into this area because I have no idea. What about orange? Orange is restrictions. So they are restricted, probably with a certain permit in Australia. Permitted throughout most of Europe. And then there's a mixed, uh, depending on local authorities, which basically means that the state has no um, specific law against it, but there are different cities inside of those states where you're simply not allowed to have one. So Washington, Colorado, Iowa, Missouri, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, Maryland, and Florida. Oh, and Michigan. I forgot Michigan. Michigan is forgettable, though, so I don't feel bad about it. So, yeah, I mean, the, there's places around the world where you see them banned. Uh, Tuck says probably an exotic animals permit. Probably not even that much. They probably just have a special permit for them. But I could probably do this with a lot of different breeds, and why? Well, as we've already established, there's no real reason why. There's no legal reason. There's no statistical reason. It's just because they don't want them. And there's, on a certain level, I, I have to at least admit some kind of surrender because if the people, if this is what the people want then that's what the people get. Like, if people voted for it, then I can't really say anything about it. In most of Europe, in most of the UK, in most of North America, I'm going to go ahead and assume that people voted for it. It's also interesting how Greenland, there's like nothing. I guess because absolutely nobody lives in Greenland, which I think is hilarious. Or no, wait, yeah, that's Greenland. Say, did I get him backwards? No, I didn't, I didn't get him backwards. The little one is Iceland. So I, the, I can go through and do this with pretty much any breed. Uh, German Shepherd. Yeah, that one. So if we look at German Shepherds, uh, states prohibiting beat specific legislation. So I guess we can look at this one in the opposite. So this is states prohibiting breed specific legislation. So anywhere in white can presumably restrict um, German shepherds, I think. No, wait, I'm looking at it wrong. Other way around. So yeah, anywhere in orange is uh, probably banning them. If not banning pit bulls or German shepherds, then probably banning something else. And, I mean, what do you want me to do about it? Not a whole lot I can do about it. All I can say is that the problem is not one of actual data. It's one of culture. 
And as we stated when we started this out, there's pretty much no such thing as bad dogs. There's only bad owners. And so what I, when I look at this and I see people going to ban certain breeds, the one thing that I kind of see above all else is this comes back to culture, which is something that I talk about a lot and I'm much better at talking about. Because if you have these dog breeds, primarily you're going to have only two people, I think, who are going to try and ban a breed of dog or all dogs in general. The first, I think, is going to simply be the, um, the people who think that all dogs are dangerous. And I do know there are people out there like that. A really, really good example I can, I can think of is Steven Crowder. Now, whether you like Steven Crowder, whether you don't like Steven Crowder, I don't care. But Steven Crowder, the famous online polit sociopolitical commentator, he's got his own show and everything. One of the things that he likes to brag about is his dog. He has a purebred Doggo Argentino, which if you're not familiar with it, I don't blame you because I almost didn't believe that was a real breed when I heard it. But this is a Doggo Argentino, and by the way, this is also banned in like everywhere. This is a Doggo Argentino, which if it looks familiar to like a, a pit bull or something, it kind of does. That's not exactly the same, but similar enough that I thought it was. But these were working security dogs. Uh, Blizzard Star says more of a Mastiff. It is literally a Doggo. It is a Doggo Argentino. That is not a joke, it is not hyperbole, it's literally called a doggo. And I love it for that. So this is, this is what Crowder has, and he's had several of them. Now I bring this up because Crowder, of course, like I said, he has his own, his own podcast, his own show, he hosts it in the studio and everything. And he has guest stars on there. One of those guest stars is the Hodge Twins. So, why don't, I, why don't I go ahead and pull this up? Okay, just so that I have, you know, some, some visuals here. So, I want images. And Hodge Twins. No, I don't want to know their age. I don't care how old they are. I just want a picture. All right, so this is Steven Crowder. Maybe you've seen him, maybe you haven't, doesn't matter. That's Steven Crowder. That is his dog. And many times he will have guests on and these are some of his guests. These are the Hodge twins. Now, whether you want to call it um, a stereotype or not, uh, the Hodge twins, they is black, and they were both brought up to hate and fear dogs. Mostly because, well, in the black community, that is what they teach people. They do that because once upon a time, back during the civil rights era, dogs were used very often and very viciously against black protesters. But even though we are long past that, that fear has been taught to every single generation coming afterwards. And they were no exception. These two people were absolutely terrified. And by the way, they're bodybuilders, okay? I mean, these people are built they work out. They know how to fight. They know what they're doing. And they were terrified of this. 
And it was really fascinating to watch the show when they were first introduced to the dog, which they thought was, you know, big scary dog, and to then watch them nowadays where when they're in the studio and the dog is in the studio with everybody in like every show and they're best friends with the dog now. Literally, this dog right here changed their entire perspective on all dogs. The problem that we have is not the dogs. It's the culture. It's the culture in two ways. Number one, we have a culture, particularly among the black community in North America, but a culture around the world in general that tells people that dogs are dangerous and that you should fear dogs. If you really needed to fear dogs, we would not have bred them. The fact is that we only have dogs today because people looked at wolves and said, I want one of those. And wolves are actually dangerous. Like, you cannot go pet a wolf. It will kill you. And then it will feed you to its cubs. And we said, yep, I want one of those. And so we managed to befriend wolves, and then we bred them down to these. Trust me, you have nothing to fear from dogs. But that does not stop some people from pushing that fear. And the second is a culture and a climate of no accountability. It's a lot easier to go after a dog than it is to go after a person because people can fight back. Dogs are generally not allowed to fight back. So, if, you know, you go to somebody's house and, and uh, go after their dog. Well, the dog is probably not going to fight you back. A person will. And when I say fight you back, I don't mean that they're going to try and bite you. I mean that... You can go to a dog or someone and say their dog is misbehaving. And you can take out whatever you want on the dog. It's a lot harder to go to the person, though, who can actually argue back against you and maybe even attack you back if you tell them they're a bad owner. And I will fully stand by the idea that there are no bad dogs. There are just bad owners. It's a lot harder to hold people accountable, though, for their actions. Now, it's it's a bit easier. It, it's a bit easier when it comes to things like dogs because, again, that culture that teaches fear of dogs will back up any accusation that you make against a person and their dog. So it's a lot easier in that method. But to just walk up to a person and say, you're a bad person, that's harder. I mean, it's easier for some people. Like, I would have no problem doing it. As a matter of fact, I'm on the internet doing it right now. If anybody thinks that I'm addressing them directly because, you know, they think that I'm calling them a bad dog owner, then... Have at it. Leave something in the comments. But if you have a problem with somebody, it's also easier to just go after their dogs. The same way it's easier to go after somebody's job or somebody's house or whatever. We see this a lot in cancel culture nowadays, where if you really want to hurt somebody, well, once upon a time, you would go and you would just punch them because it was seen as the more honorable thing to do and because going after them in some kind of circuitous route would be seen as cowardly. Well, we don't have cowardice anymore. I mean, pe people are not ashamed uh, of doing things like this anymore. And Tuxedo says that I am a bad person. I am a bad person. I knew it. We don't live in a culture of shame anymore, so if you wanted to hurt somebody, you can go after other things. Going after some... 
By going after somebody directly, you could do them direct damage. You could hurt somebody in a way that they will wake up in the morning and they will feel it. You can hurt them physically. You can hurt their pride. You can even go ahead and kill them if you wanted to. But that's illegal. And again, now we don't have any shame. So we go after people in other ways. And I've, I've discussed this before at length. When you cancel somebody, you go after their job. No job means that they have no income. No income means no money. No money means no housing and no food. If you don't have food and you don't have shelter, we go back to our rule of threes. And what is the rule of threes? Again, as a reminder, and I will remind you every time because this should be drilled into your brain. Three minutes without air, three hours without shelter, three days without water, three weeks without food. If you can deprive any one of those four things from a person, then you have basically killed them. And if you can do that without ever having to actually lay a finger on them, you can do so legally. The same thing is true here. Now, obviously, when we go back to the case in Egypt, that happened after a dog attack. We can go ahead and get rid of this. There we go. Why is it that we're blaming the dog for the attack and not the owner? Again, we don't even know why the dog did it. However, the dog will be held responsible for it. What about the owner? Well, as they pointed out here in, in the article, the owner was a celebrity of some kind. The odds are that they probably can't hold the owner responsible in any way, shape, or form. And the fact is that... Egypt is going to ban all of these animals. Now they're going to ban the pit bulls, like the one that was just using the attack. However, what did I say when I first brought this up? Who is this going to affect? Well, it's not going to be the people who are rich and powerful enough to actually do this. This celebrity who owned the pit bull, do you think they're going to lose their dog? Not likely. Again, you're allowed to have all these, or many of these other dogs if they're permitted. Who can afford a permit for this dog? I don't know. How about a celebrity? So what can they do about it? Well, they can go after them financially. Which is to say, if they can't actually sue them because the courts probably will not favor them, because they probably have enough money to pay off all the right people, instead what they'll do is this. They will submit new legislation. They will say that we're banning all of the dog breeds. And then, if they can't get this person in court, they can get them through the bureaucracy. And they can simply say, we can't, we can't actually find judgment against you, but we can hold you to the same standard as everybody else. And now, you have to get your dog permitted. And it'll probably be an annual permit, meaning that you'll have to pay every single year while you have your dog. And we're going to have to inspect your dog, which means you'll have to give your dog to us, and then we can do whatever we want to it. And you can see how this has been fueled by more... I can't say provably, but it's more likely been pushed forward by people who are bitter and cruel which is what you likely see in cancel culture everywhere the people who push this idea of cancel culture are bitter and cruel people they are evil people there's nothing constructive about what they do it is only destructive now, in the case of cancel culture in general, it's usually focused destruction, focused on an individual. In this case, well, again, I cannot make too many assumptions about why they're doing it. 
I can say what it looks like. And what it looks like is burning down the entire barn just to get a rat. They, can, they don't really care if they harm the entire population, so long as they can harm the one person they're after. And so I go back to what I said before, this is a cultural issue. And it always has been. If you don't, if you haven't noticed, the entire thing about dogs being banned in different places, it is kind of a relatively new thing. I mean, for the longest time, there were no regulations on dogs, and you were responsible for your dog and everything that it did. Much like if you have a child, and your child destroys something, it is you who are held responsible for what your child did. It used to be you were held responsible for what your dog did as well. Now, this is still true to a certain extent. You will still be held to... or you'll be held responsible for things like damages and such, but it also blames the dog. I mean, if, you, if your dog is, is accused of harming somebody in some way, whether it's true or not, law states that the dog must be destroyed. Now, am I saying that the owner should be destroyed instead? Uh, no. Not entirely. Am I suggesting that perhaps maybe we should do things like uh, jail time and such for this? Maybe. Like, if you, ha if you have a dog and you fail to train it and maintain it properly, should you go to jail for that? Especially if it hurts somebody? Well, I don't know. Let's think about that. What if you have a car? And what if the car hits and kills somebody? I mean, you might say that the car doesn't have a mind of its own, but still, you're responsible for what the car did. I can go back and reference the same argument I made against children. The child does have a mind of its own. We just have this tendency not to put down children. Yet. I feel like we're heading in that direction, though. So why is it we see this difference with dogs? Because there's people out there that hate dogs. And people out there that hate dog owners. Because let's not leave that one out either. This, this is absolutely not just about dogs. They hate dog owners, too. And if you want to get into things that are cultural, things that are political, things of that nature, when it comes to dogs like pit bulls, like German shepherds, when it comes to all these, these big, tough working breeds, who generally has them? Generally speaking, if somebody's going to have a big dog like that, it's going to be somebody who is going to be conservative. Somebody traditional who wants to have a working dog. Somebody who is rich and they can have one as a status symbol. All of these different groups that are generally accepted as being valid targets. Acceptable targets for whatever reason whether it's the culture war whether it's legal wars it's okay to to hate these people because of what they are and again if you can't go after them directly then just try to hurt them in different ways go after their animals the problem isn't with dogs it's never been with dogs We've had dogs forever, we bred dogs forever, and dogs today are no different than dogs a hundred years ago. Maybe we have a couple of new breeds, but the dogs haven't changed. So what has changed? We have. People have changed. And if you want things to go back, you're not going to get there by banning dog breeds. You're, you're not going to get there by restricting what you can have and where, or by getting permits for them. 
It's not going to help now any more than it would have helped a long time ago. No. The only way that we're going to get through this is to work on people. People need to be raised with this idea that if you're going to have a dog, you are responsible for everything the dog does. People need to be res uh, need to be re-educated and retrained to have pride in what they do, including taking care of their dogs, taking care of their training. Because if you look at one thing, if you look at a dog, a well-trained dog next to its owner, you can see the pride. And that pride goes both ways. The owner is proud of having a well-trained dog, and the dog is proud of being there. Dogs absolutely have pride in what they're doing, especially when it comes to working breeds. You don't see that so much in things like toy dogs. But, but all of your working breeds, all of your sporting breeds, oh yeah, they know what they're doing. They know how special they are and how smart they are. I see JP made it. Hello, JP. You uh, you should have pretty much just at the end, because I think I'm about to get out of here. The issue is a cultural one. And until we fix the culture around dogs and dog ownership, the rest of it's not going to change. Now, how do we do that? I actually don't know. I know where a good place to start would be. The best place to start would be to stop demonizing dogs in culture. And that would require us going to those, those cultures and those subcultures who teach their children. Because again, it always comes back to the children who raise their children, teaching them that dogs are to be feared and hated to get them to stop doing that. The real question is how? Because that also leads to a very dark place. Because now you're telling parents how they need to raise their own children. That's not good either. But I don't really have any other options here. I don't know what else to suggest. As I pointed out earlier with the Steven Crowder example, you can... Get people to snap out of this. You can introduce people to dogs. You can introduce them to some of these more aggressive breeds that are really not that aggressive at all. I mean, the Doggo Argentina was regarded as one of the most vicious dogs in the world, you know, among those people who've actually heard of it. And now these two people that were terrified of dogs are best friends with it. It can be fixed, but it requires that people want to fix it. And then it requires people that will allow it to be fixed. And until those two things are, are reached, nothing can change. Same rules as when you go into like therapy. You can only help somebody who wants to be helped. And a lot of people, they don't want to be helped. They don't want to change. They hate dogs, and they hate dog owners, and they want to continue to hate both. Those people will probably never change till the day they die. And maybe that's what we have to wait for. Maybe we have to start early and just wait for the older generations of people who hate dogs and dog owners to die off. It sounds callous, but perhaps it's the only solution. Unless you're going to suggest that things like re-education camps are, are a solution, and trust me, they're not. Not only do they not work, but that would be opening the door to a whole lot of worse things. But there we go. You want a discussion about dogs? There is your discussion on dogs. Not only did you get a discussion on dogs, you got a discussion on the culture war and the global sociopolitical socio climate. That'll teach you to ask for things in the future. <laughs> uh, I kid, though. You probably actually enjoyed that. Anyway, though, 
I got a few more things that I got to take care of today, so I think that I'm going to cut this one off here. It's been a good solid hour and a half, so I don't feel too bad about that. We covered a lot of good topics, and we saw a lot of good boys in the background. So it's all good. Tuck says, you don't like dogs? To the re-education camp with you. Yeah, as much as I, I want, or I, I know that that would be bad. Yeah, part of me kind of wants it. <clears throat> Look, I never claimed to be a good person. In fact, I said so. Tuck's even, even agreed with me earlier. I'm a bad person. Therefore, I can say re-education camps for the dog haters. Because that's something only a bad person would say. But yeah, um, I'm going to get out of here. I have no idea what the uh, the subject for next week is going to be. At this point, I'm just kind of following the news and I'm, I'm looking for inspiration there. There's a few things that I could be talking about. There's other topics that I kind of want to discuss, but I feel wholly underqualified to talk about, so I'm not doing it yet. Uh, I'll figure out something for next week, though. Again, uh, tomorrow, we go back to the uh, the tabletop stream. We're working on more uh, more classes for the Final Fantasy module. So if you want to be here for that, you know what time it is tomorrow. Same time as this was. Otherwise, I will see you next week for that lecture. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do that. If you haven't hit the bell icon, do that. Notifications do work for now. So take advantage of them while I still have them. Uh, Tux says submarines and the strength of carbon fiber. Well, I can tell you what carbon fiber is not strong enough for. I mean, I, I feel pretty underqualified to cover submarine engineering, but I can tell you what you shouldn't make your submarine out of. That is seven inches of carbon fiber. There was a lot of things wrong with that submarine. I'm not going get to get into it now. But maybe. Like, if I can think up an entire lecture on that one, then I might do it. Instead, though, all I can say is, um, <clears throat> where is it? Who, who did a really good video on that? I watched this morning. Uh, who did a really good video on that one? Where's my history? History. It was... No, no, no. Here we go. Um, Ocean Liner Designs. If you go to the YouTube channel, Ocean Liner Designs. Let me just go ahead and put that in the chat. Ocean Liner Designs is a great, um, a great channel if you like ships. Whether that be modern ships, historical... Most of it's historical ships. But if you just like big boats in general, great channel. And he did a 35-minute video on the Titan. All of it. And to the point where there's like nothing more that I can say about it. Because he already covered everything. So if you want to talk about Titan, go watch that. I, I, I wholeheartedly endorse that that discussion i'll think of something else though don't worry or i mean if you'd rather maybe we'll just turn it into a discussion where i go through all the big boats and ships that i love which is basically just gonna be a list of anything that's like over a certain tonnage and up because i like all of them i don't know we'll figure well I'll, I'll figure out what it's gonna be so subscribe hit the bell icon if you haven't done already share this video with anyone you think might enjoy it because this is actually a really good discussion to share. If you know somebody who enjoys dogs already, they'll enjoy the discussion. If you know somebody who doesn't like dogs and you're trying to convince them, maybe. Maybe I can be a gateway to some people who don't like dogs and I can point them at their own biases and maybe, maybe change their mind. So share the video out if you can. Otherwise though, leave a like on the video, leave a comment down below. I'll see you either tomorrow for the tabletop stream or next time, maybe not next week, but next time for the lecture. Either way, I'll see you around. Until then, 
Take care.